Hello everybody, welcome back to a new episode of Reentry. I am Bat Boob and this is the only way it is Beastly. Today I will be doing the reaction control system for the Lunar Lander. Uh, one I'm not particularly looking forward to if it's going to be a load of manoeuvring, but well, hopefully we'll be able to do it. If you've watched my previous videos, you know I absolutely hate manoeuvring because I can never normally get it. Hopefully we can. So before we start, of course, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, help us keep growing this channel. Right, so welcome to the Reaction Control System lesson of the Lunar Module Academy. Roger that. The RCS is used to control the attitude and translation of the spacecraft itself. And attitude and translation are controlled with 16 RCS thrust chamber assemblies, the TCAs. The TCAs can receive propellants from the RCS propellant supplies or by propellants from the ascent propulsion section. So the RCS consists of two parallel independent systems, A and B, which under normal conditions function simultaneously. Each system has its own pressurized propellant supplier that feeds eight to which feeds eight two of the thrusters and eight TCAs. I don't know about you guys, that doesn't seem to fit right with me. And I know obviously, obviously it's a spelling mistake there, I was meant to say eight, but it says eight. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, something doesn't sit right with how that's worded. Anyway, uh, fuel and oxidizer are loaded into the bladders within the propellant tanks pressurized by helium. Uh, the RCS propellant tanks are pressurized immediately before separation of the LM from the CSM by firing of explosive valves by the explosive device subsystem. So let's learn how to pressurize the RCS now. First of all, master the arm the master arm switch on the explosive device on panel 8. So for that, we need to shoot into the lunar module. Oh lovely, it's all powered up, lovely and lit. Right, let me get to a bit of a better height. There we go, there's that switch. Okay, that's that done. So approximately one pound of gaseous helium at normal pressure of uh, 3050 PSIA at 70 plus degrees Fahrenheit is stored in the helium tank. So this will be used to pressurize the RCS once we open the valves. Do this by setting the HE press RCS switch to fire, which you can see is hidden under this yellow bar. So we'll click that. Okay, so helium now flows into the RCS system. We can monitor the helium pressure by using the temp press mon sector on the bottom left side of panel two. And panel two, do we just do on the bottom left side? So it should be around here somewhere, shouldn't it? I can't see anything else up yet. Bottom left side of panel two. Now I'm probably being a bit thick and not noticing it, so. This is panel two, bottom left. Hmm. I wonder if that's it. Unless I mean, like, well, that's panel three. Yeah. So, reaction control gauges on the upper left side of panel two used to monitor the RCS. When set to HE, the val value on the RCS press gauge needs to be multiplied by 10. That must be this then. Reaction control. Value on the RCS pressure gauge. So that's where the pressure gauge is at. So it needs to be multiplied by 10, so it's 3000. Okay, so 32 heaters are used to heat the 16 TCAs. Each TCA has two heaters, and these are controlled by eight different fuses. So let's take a closer look at that. You can control the individual heaters by opening the heaters. RCS, SYS, AB, 1, 2 circuit breakers. First open the RCS system AB1, quad 1 to 4 on panel 11, which is located here. So 1, we just open them on. Next open the RCS 2. On panel 16. Okay, let's verify that the three fuses for Q1, 2, and 3 are closed and both number 4 are open, so that's number 4 there. So 1 and 2 are obviously, 1, 2 and 3 should I say are closed for A and B. <coughs> and let's quickly check 16. Yeah, all closed, perfect. Okay, so we'll leave Q4 open. Uh, Q4 open 
for a while now, but please remember that all of these fuses are usually closed. So the main heater controls are located on panel 3, right here, and usually set to auto. So let's set quad 4 to off. So these controls are also provide manual control of the heaters. Uh, man will set the heaters to on and off will disable the heater. Auto will try to keep the temperature within limits above 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So primary power, uh, 28 volts, is supplied to the TCA primary coils via the RCS system A and RCS system B. Quad TCA circuit breakers on panel 11 and panel 16. I'm not quite sure where they are on panel 11 yet. So let's close each of these. Uh, RCS system A, quad 1 TCA on panel 11 is closed. So that, oh, that's where it is. There it is, closed now. Okay, let's close that one too. Number three and number four. This will be on panel 16 now. That's all right. It's going to be all of these, I imagine. One, two, three, and four. Okay, so with all of the TCS powered, all that remains is to open the reactant valve so propellant and fuel gets to each of them. So set the system thruster A pair quad 1 on panel 2 to the open value. There we are. And set uh, the system A thruster pair quad 2 on panel 2 to open as well. Uh, number 3. I'm going to guess we'll do number 4. There we go. Oh, and two more, okay. Two, come on. Three, and four. Okay, so next we need to open the main shutoff valve by setting the main SOB system A switch A to open, and B to open as well. So we will get more into the flight mode later, but for this lesson, uh, we will set the pitch attitude control mode to pulse. This is done on panel three under stabilize and control. So why do we need to set it three and two now? There we are, pulse. Okay. You should now be able to pitch the spacecraft using W and S, which is obviously the default bindings. And you can hear it. There you are, you can just about see the Earth changing its location in the window on the right hand side there. Don't want to get too close, otherwise I'll end up crashing back in. So, a pulse mode will only fire the jet briefly for each deflection. Use the external view to see this. Let's have a quick glance outside. There we go. Okay. W, S, there you are. You can see that they only fire for a very brief time, even when I'm holding them down. Okay. Let's go back to, the, to that one and then to the LM. Okay. So you uh, obviously cancel the fixed rates and get back into the spacecraft. Yeah, I'm in there. Use the temp monitor selector on panel 3 to cycle through the temperatures on each quad. Right, where's this? Temperature, temperature, temperature. Temp monitor says I need to cycle through each quad. So that's burned right. Okay, so that is... 100 degrees. I thought that's at 500. Right, it's 100 degrees on quad 4. 110 there, 110 is there, 110 is there, okay, that's not too bad. Notice that quad 1, 2 and 3 should have a temperature range up to 160 Fahrenheit, while quad 4 will be quite low as the heaters have been disabled. So it's around about 100, from what I saw. It's important that these temperatures are in the quads um, over 125 Fahrenheit before using the RCS system. So the RCS system is mostly used by the Lunar Guidance computer as well as the direct modes available and we will dive into this in the next lesson oh goody and that's all for this lesson so it has been a short video uh, i'm kind of glad in all honesty because i really don't want to get too deeply entrenched in the mechanics of trying to maneuver this thing because like i said if you've watched my videos before you know i always always have issues with maneuvering on this uh, but of course if you got this far, well, first of all well done and second of all, thank you. Don't forget, as I said in the beginning of the video, to give us a like, comment, subscribe, help keep this channel growing so we can keep bringing more of these videos. And we'll catch you at the next one. Take care, guys.